Thousands of years ago, Sigurd I built incredible engines of war, and with them, forged an empire. The emperor married and sired many children. He even had a love child with mysterious Aurora, an ancient dragon in a woman's guise. Once united, peace was declared in Rivalon, and bloodshed soon forgotten. But Sigurd's realm of peace was shattered when his own sons and daughters rose against him. War returned with a vengeance, and annihilation reached new heights. Desperate to safeguard Sigurd's legacy, the wizard Maxos sought the help of the one child that never betrayed his father. Sigurd and Aurora's son, the half-dragon prince. He would be the one to save the empire from ruin, and to aid him in his quest, Maxos delivered unto him the imperial command ship known as the Raven. This is the story of Maxos and the Dragon. This is the story of the Dragon Commander. Welcome, noble dragon, to the Raven. This wonder of engineering, this miracle wrought in magic that has a living demon for a heart. Between the knowledge I shall pry from this infernal creature's cryptic mind and the avalanche of tomes, manuscripts, and blueprints aboard awaiting study, we will catch up with our enemies in no time and claim back the lands they have taken by force. Our task is monumental. But we will not have to face it alone. Two famed generals are here already, loyal to the legacy we are trying to save, and therefore loyal to you, given time. I have furthermore enlisted the service of Grumio, an imp of devilish cunning that can fashion anything my research will uproot. Already he has created you a wonder he calls a jet pack. Talk to these men. Get your bearings and begin your conquest. If you have any more questions, you can find me in the royal chamber, which I shall use as a study. Good luck, dragon. May the divines be with you. Let me tell your right of the bat bastard that I hold you in very little regard. Your father may have been a great king once, but this last decade, a crowned pig would have played a part better. He became a vainglorious fool, a sloth, and a coward. No wonder then that his own children could amass armies unperceived and strike at the heart of a kingdom in a matter of days. He tried to run, but he failed, and they slew him where he stood. Now the realm has been shattered, and vultures are picking what they can from his corpse by means of new and terrifying war machines. I'd say all is lost, but Maxos insists you are to be the one, the hero, who will take back the land we've lost. Excuse me if I laugh in derision. Ha! <laughs> Still, you are a dragon, I'll give you that, and of ancient blood. Prove to me you have the rocks to do undaunted battle, and perhaps my respect may still be yours. Aye, and you have titles as well, but none of them king as yet. I'll address you with the right regard the day you prove worthy of it. Henry of the House of Lancefoot. Mo Edmund, he's called. A lizard of the House of Carcharus. In truth, I'd rather sleep with Syphilis Incarna than have him aboard, but there's no denying his talent. He's as arrogant as he is astute, and as ingenious as he is insufferable. Why don't you offer him a word of welcome? I know I won't. I believe he's in the bar. Probably searching for Sherry, just about the only drink that snooty serpent will swill.
And there we have it, I suppose. The dragon son of a monarch deposed. Rightful heir to the throne, even if he was born out of wedlock. No doubt that boar of a Henry has already introduced me in his ever-elegant way. So here I am. Lord Edmund Augustus III, Duke of Hawknest Hall. I'd add, at your service, but I don't think we're quite there yet. To be perfectly honest, I'd normally entertain the idea of lending my expertise to your cause as curtly as I'd consider attending a dwarven opera. But not unlike my fellow general, it is Maxos's backing of this enterprise that has me intrigued. You have doubts benefit, Dragon. Let's see how far it takes you. When one dwells among the highest echelons of power, where ambition runs thicker than blood, distrust is your best friend, as is its brother, Caution. In your case, though, the waters of misgiving run somewhat deeper. You are, after all, but a half-dragon. They call your kind Dragon Knights to lend an air of nobility to a lowly mixed breed. Not many make the distinction, even, but the crucial difference is in purity. Human ancestry taints your being, for humanity and weakness are two sides of the same tuppence I drop in beggars' hats. A bastard twice are you, my lord. Bastard born and bastard bred. Greeting, sire, sprung from kings. I am Grumio, son of Gromeo, an imp of good and honest standing. Your technician shall I be, if it pleases you. Your engineer and architect. I hope you'll like my jetpack. It is my gift to you, to keep without recompense, for gladly shall I remain aboard this wondrous ship to tinker and toy, hammer and hew. She is special, this vessel. Filled with wonders undiscovered. The wizard, he feels it too. The taste, the tingle of mystery. Oh, to unlock its secrets. Right oh, my lord.
Yes, Commander. Which one do you have? He's a slimy kid who happens to excel at warfare. I once met a lizard who went to school with him when he was but fresh from the eggshell. Told me he'd always been like that. Smart as a whip, but a loner too. Hopelessly assured that he is better than everybody else, and has ten brains for every one that we have. Worst part is, he may well have. But don't you ever tell him I said that. Great dragon, glorious warlord. Once more you return from the battlefield red with the blood of slain adversaries. And let me tell you, these victories of yours have not gone by unnoticed. In fact, to my great satisfaction, another pair of dauntless generals has joined our company. Four military masterminds are now on board, more than enough to start a campaign of conquest on a truly grand scale. No doubt you're as anxious to meet them as they are to meet you. So why don't you go to the throne room, where I've instructed them to await? Heavens no. You have the military firmly on your side. Yes, you heard me correctly, Emperor. It is inevitable. You yourself will of course rep- My Lord Dragon, allow me to present your team of generals. Edmund, you already know, but I now have the pleasure of introducing you to Her Highness Lady Catherine, Queen of Westbridge, and Scarlet, not noble of birth, but the more so of heart. We four have pledged we will stand by you in your conquest as a rightful heir to Revelon's throne. Bastard no longer, you shall be known as Commander until the day comes that you shall be King. All hail the dragon. Hail. Hail. Yes, well, hail. I would say it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Commander. But as it stands, I must approach you with a bit of reserve. True, to know we have a dragon knight for a leader is a great relief. For such a grand creature inspires bravado in the many hearts that will have to be won so that we may overthrow the spreading dark. But then again, you are the offspring, the male offspring to boot, of a sorry line prone to decadence and corruption. The very line, in fact, that is responsible for the downfall of the Empire in the first place. Forgive me then if I do wonder, will this commander pass muster, earn his wings, earn his crown? Because they call us females the fairer sex. But in truth, we are also more cunning, resilient, refined, and downright intelligent. 
Give an empire a queen, I say, and it will be ruled. Give it a king, and it will become an afterthought. For like any man, he is content when both his belly and his bed are filled with a prize piece of tender flesh. No more. Men are simple creatures, Commander, and should therefore be in charge of simple things only. How's it hanging, Commander? I'm Scarlet, and you're a dragon, they tell me. Always wanted to ride one of those, though I bet you're a little harder to handle than a horse. All part of the fun, though, I reckon, so uh, give me a shout when I can take you for a spin. Treat me mean, I'll scratch your eyes out. Treat me well, and I'll purr like a kitten. You're... Underway, Commander. We're out of recruits, Commander. Without a trace. Not enough recruits to turn 
into a dragon, Commander.
Ah, Commander. No doubt you've had an eventful and successful day so far. But don't rest on your laurels just yet. For I'm here to inform you the counselors have arrived. The ambassadors of the races whom you'll have to duel and deal with in the political arena. Such is both the prerogative and the burden of an emperor to be. You may think your first duty is that of conquest, to bring the war to as swift an end as possible. But I'm afraid there is much more to being a monarch than military matters alone. As a commander, as an emperor, you'll have to constantly endeavor to find that delicate balance between your roles as strategist and statesman, for the one necessarily influences the other. Now, you may consider it strange that some will worry about the price of bread and others will gripe about taxes. When all around us, machines of war threaten the existence of the very realm. But if you give it a moment's further thought, this is only logical. We may find ourselves trapped amid a conflict of gargantuan proportions. But that does not mean the average man worries most about feeding his family, about the little things that make for a happy life. And when you have been given an empire, Commander, you have to be responsible for every matter, every obstacle, every creature, great and small. This may seem daunting, but I have never and never will doubt for even an instant that you of all people will rise to the occasion. Your counselors await you in the throne room, Commander. Godspeed. Aha! Shush, everyone, shush! Here comes the long-awaited Commander. The dragon that would deliver us from vile usurpers. The one deserving heir to Rivalon's throne. Let me cut right to the chase, Commander, for I'm not a man who takes pride in his words, but in his pragmatism, rather. The entire realm is under siege, and the free peoples left need a strong leader. One who inspires. You see, there may be a war going on, Commander, but that doesn't mean you don't have a realm to rule. Oftentimes, Political concerns will take precedence over military ones, no matter how trivial they may sometimes seem in these dark times. As much as possible, where your rule has been established, everyday life must continue like it would in times of peace, and everyday life concerns itself with everyday worries. The people will look to you for guidance in these matters. We, as their representatives, have witnessed your triumphs with mounting awe, and have agreed you are to be the one, the hero, who shall both restore the kingdom and recommence the workings of government. I therefore declare you Emperor. Long live the Emperor! Long live the Emperor! May the Seven be praised now that we have found our champion and our emperor. May the fire of the dragon obliterate every heretic in its way. May the light of the gods illuminate your soul. The Highest. We are the Chosen of the Seven, Commander. We are those that have known death, have walked its black shores, but then have been restored to life. You think you are alive now, Commander, but you are not. You are but in the phase of flesh. Yet if you are devout and sweat in service of the Seven, you too, after the Dark Mother has lulled you to sleep, may be plucked from the Dales of Shadow and given the perpetuity of the Bone. Do well by the gods, Commander, and you'll do well by us, as well as all in the realm. We have many proposals to that effect, which I will bring before you in due time. So say I, Yorick, humble servant of the Seven. Honored to meet you, Commander. I am Oberon, envoy of the Elves, ambassador of the beasts, spokesman of plants, here in the hope that our new Emperor will treat majestic Rivalon with the reverence she deserves, even in these times of frightful war. Well, Commander. If Elves were the only race to have become what they misnomer civilized, 
this globe and all upon it would exist in a paradise of such perfection. The gods need not create for us a heaven. Such, alas, is the fiction, not the reality. Others less scrupulous in the handling of natural beauty have risen to prominence. They hack and mine, blast, drain and usurp. As much as we can, we condemn and attempt to stop their misguided endeavors. We are the Green Mothers, unwavering paladins. And it is our fondest desire you, Commander, will join our ranks. Defend nature and defend the little man, for they will in turn defend you. A happy people, one with the wilds, will fight for its country with redoubled zeal. To that effect, I hope we'll have your backing. By the powers vested in me by the great lizard lords, I, Prospera, endorse your newfound emperorship. Oh, sorely we are in need of a dragon, Commander. We are not a people that make great demands, Commander. We simply hold many a thing dear without succumbing to the excess of it. The dwarves revere their gold to such an extent it becomes a fetish. Elves abide so strictly by nature they become her slaves. We like gold, for it is an economical mast. We like nature, for she sustains us. Yet none of the two we idolize. Reason and liberty, those are our bywords. Territories we defend valiantly. Territories, alas, easily encroached upon for emperors tend to curtail them. Our ideal is therefore not a monarchy, but a republic. Think on that, Commander, as you pursue the throne. By Grumio's gadgets, it's a pleasure indeed to shake hands with you, Commander. Your technician is my nephew, don't you know? And I am Trunculo Shortfuse, son of Trunculo Even Shorter Fuse. Praised be the dragon! You want gizmos? You want imps. You want the unthinkable? You want imps. You want great, big, loud, bright fire explosions? Lords above, it's imps you want. We live for all that is new and shiny. The old, we blow it up. The new, we study it for a while before we blow it up. Why? Because there's always something even newer waiting around the corner. Science, great dragon, never sits still. Try, investigate, experiment. And with a bit of luck, boom! <laughs> a bigger bang than ever. On a more serious note though, Commander, science is indeed our passion, and we hope that under your rule, we will be free to explore its limits. Damn the gods, for there are none, and damn petty morality, for it is a break on progress. Back us, and we'll craft you miracles.
progress. Yes! Won't that use too much fuel?
underway, Commander. Battleforge completed. Won't that use too much fuel? We'll be built in a jiffy. Construction underway, Commander. is my enemy. Ready to follow you, even into death. Your unit will roll out momentarily, Commander. Your unit will soon be ready. Walking beer keg reporting for duty. Warlock ready. Grenadier, fresh from the barracks. Warlock awaiting orders. Warlock ready. Grenadiers are filled up with ale. Doctors in the house. Walking beer keg reporting for duty. 
Soon be ready. Ready to follow you, even into death. Yes. Bring me the spoils of war. Morning <laughs> beer cake reporting for duty. will soon be ready. At your service. Exquisite. Unit is being manufactured, Commander.
no reason to doubt your insight, sir. Citadel completed. Hope we don't hit too many fish. They'll be squished like grapes, sire. Sure. 